But uh, here we are, and this is an important opportunity for the board members and our uh, administrators to rub shoulders. Uh, we started this practice a year ago. It was well received then. And over the year, I think the collaboration of our board and our administrative team has really grown. It's not necessarily where everybody would say, hey, it's perfect, because you never achieve perfection. But we're certainly on that road. And we want to continue the practice of our administrators and board members uh, meeting, uh, speaking openly, and sharing uh, their ideas. So today, we did have to truncate the uh, meeting so that we could accommodate everyone's schedule. Uh, not all the board members could be here today. Some are on vacation. Not all the administrators could be here today. They have kids they got to bring back to college. Oh, I think we're on. <laughs> Thank you, Rob, wherever you are, whoever did this. Um, but uh, here we are together, and uh, we did take out of the uh, agenda uh, a presentation of priorities, which we'll, we did yesterday with the new teacher orientation, and we'll do next week again at the superintendent's conference day. So, uh, I did include those priorities, strategic priorities for you in the materials. Um, at least yesterday you received them, and the board has received them as well. Uh, we thought it was important to preserve the um, round rock, because that gives each of our schools an opportunity to talk about their programs. So I think the best way to proceed is, uh, first of all, Matt, did you want to do any introductions to the group? Or? Sure. So I uh, just briefly, and I think I'm fortunate enough that this is the second year now that I've uh, had the pleasure of being with all of you late in August, right before school starts. For those of you that I haven't met, just by way of introduction, I'm Matt Pinelli. My wife, Jeannie, and I <coughs> have lived in the district for a little over 10 years now. We have five kids. My oldest daughter graduated from East Chester High School. My son, Matthew, and daughter, Ava, will both be at Ann Hodge uh, in September. And I have two little ones that currently go to ICS. So I'm really looking forward to a very eventful day. And honestly, I think everything that we do is a partnership, and it's all about collaboration. So please, speak freely, speak honestly. We want to hear directly from you. What are your thoughts? What are your needs? What's working? What's not working? And how can we as a board support you more in your efforts every day with our children? Thank you. Um, so I think we're going to introduce ourselves at least once, and then we'll be meeting in small groups, which is the best way to get to know ourselves. So why don't we start with the board vice president, then we move to the board members, and then our administrators can take over. So Chrissy? Sure. I think I know you all, but hi, Chrissy Gagan, I'm vice president this year. Um, my oldest is going into 10th grade, my daughter in 8th grade, and my youngest in 3rd grade. Hi everyone, I'm Jackie DeMarco. I'm the board secretary this year. Uh, my two sons are at Greenvale, going to third and fifth grade. Uh, my husband Frank and I are uh, local business owners. Um, we own a lot pharmacy in town. I uh, just want to thank you all for being here today and looking forward to a good session. Hi, I'm Lori Giacosi. This is my second year as a board trustee. I have a son, Anthony, who is going into first grade at Waverly, and a future Eagle, who's three. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, just like what Matt said, looking forward to a strong collaboration this year. Hi, everyone. Sean Fallon. It's uh, my first year. Some of you may know my wife. We've been very involved in the various PTAs at school. She's PTA president at uh, Waverly. She's helping out at Ann Hutch. Uh, we have two kids in the system right now. One uh, is going into third grade at Ann Hodge, the other is in first grade at Waverly, uh, and then the little guy who, future Eagle as well. Uh, really looking forward to getting to know everybody a little bit better and uh, continuing our work together. Hi there, this is Christy McCloskey, second year board trustee, time flies for certain, and uh, I've got a senior starting here, last child going through uh, East Chester District. I know I can't believe it, but I also have a, um, a senior, sorry, senior, senior son, and 
a senior that's going to be graduating college this year. So two seniors, uh, my daughter, University of Tampa, and then right in the middle is my son, who's now two years out in the workforce, went through the BOCES program as an electrician, not on wood, he's doing great. Um, so really looking forward to being here, meeting everyone, and uh, collaboration is always great amongst us. So looking forward to it. Hi everyone, uh, Rob Krakowski. This is my first full year. I was interim uh, or appointed for a couple months there in the spring. Um, I have two kids uh, going into fourth grade and second grade at Ann Hutch. Uh, and like I said, uh, happy to be here and look forward to working and meeting everyone. Good evening, what are you doing? Absolutely. Good afternoon, everyone. <laughs> Vidya Bot, Principal of Waverly, our day <coughs> one building, trying to make it an educational Disneyland with my partner here, Mr. Luna, and uh, really excited to be here. We served the district from 06 to 2017 at Ann Hutch as a reading specialist, transitioned <coughs> from 2017 to 2021 as a very proud assistant high school um, assistant principal, and really excited to be here today to work with everyone. <laughs> Hi, I'm Eliana Deluna. I'm the assistant principal at Waverly, and this is my second year in Eastchester. I look forward to just continuing the really exciting work and a lot of really good things happening. Looking forward to this new school year. Um, I have my partner here next to me, so we're rocking now. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, good afternoon. I'm Caitlin Mondelli, assistant principal over at Greenville Elementary. This is my second year here with Eastchester. I did 19 years um, with New York City prior to coming on board. It's been a, a wonderful community, and I look forward to uh, collaborating with all of you. So thank you. Annette Keene, principal of Van Hutchinson School. I'm looking forward to this afternoon. Susan Chester, the um, supervisor of humanities district-wide. I am sitting with my elementary colleagues this afternoon, since we're gonna do a little bit of um, talking with you about changes in our literacy curriculum K-5. to Good afternoon, Erin McGee, Assistant Director of Special Education. This is my 22nd year here in the district. Um, my son and daughter both attend. I have a son going into ninth grade, a daughter going into seventh, and my husband is also a sixth grade middle school teacher. So we probably should get a tattoo of an eagle, but um, <laughs> <laughs> very East Chester bred family. Hi, good afternoon everyone. I'm Christine Guerin, uh, the other Assistant Director of Special Education. Uh, this is the start of my 20th school year here at East Chester. Prior, I was a uh, chairperson for the district, and then to, before that, a school psychologist. Good afternoon, everybody. Greg Stowell, assistant superintendent. It's only my second year here, but I am fortunate enough to work with these two wonderful uh, uh, educational leaders. Um, so I'm looking forward to this afternoon. Hey, everybody. Rob Jacoby, director of technology. I think I'm about six weeks in. <laughs> I'm having a, good, having a good time still, and it's, uh, it's nice to see everybody. Thanks. <laughs> Hey everyone, Tom Machine, sixth grade special ed teacher, also assistant director of athletics. I'm here to talk about sixth grade math, and I'm very excited to be here. EHS graduate of 2014, and going to my fourth year teaching here. Janelle Lindell, assistant principal of East Chester Middle School. This is my second year. I went by really quick. I'm really excited to continue what we began last year, and really work and collaborate with everybody, and have a great year with our middle school students this year. Hi everyone, Madeline Lebu. I'm going into my seventh year. Prior to uh, the principal, I was the assistant principal for four years. I consider myself a really lucky girl. I love EMS, all about it. Um, thank you for your collaboration and the opportunities that you give us in order to um, give opportunities to back to our students in our building. Looking forward to this afternoon and um, yeah, go Eagles, great. <laughs> Hi everyone, Minnie Iannuzzi, supervisor of STEM K-12. Um, third year in the district and uh, looking forward to a great year and lots of lots of uh, good stuff so thank you all for your support and um, yeah let's have a great afternoon good afternoon board joe DeMeo, assistant principal here at the high school uh, i believe it's my seventh year here and i think 29th overall uh, i did i didn't get to meet you but i met your car prior to me walking in here so i realized who it was I was walking out of central office and he opened the door. <laughs> Boom! And I was like, oh, was like, really? <laughs> so uh, that, that, that was fun. But uh, looking forward to this afternoon and uh, hopefully we, uh, we have some great conversations because I think that's important. So thank you and welcome to the new board members.
Joe Gilson, the other assistant principal at the high school. This will be my second year. Um, had a great first year. Looking forward to continuing working on our goals. And thank you for the evening. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. This is my third year as the director of physical education, health, and athletics. I look forward to the continued dialogue and partnership so that we can provide our students with robust physical education, health, and of course, quality at, at athletic programs here. And as our, my colleague said, go Eagles. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jeanette Messina, Director of Personnel for the District. Uh, this will be my 26th school year with the district. I've been in my role uh, for approximately 22 years. So um, clearly I love East Chester. My son just graduated from East Chester High School. Uh, proud mommy moment and starting, we have orientation on Friday for college. So um, I'm looking forward to today as well to collaborate here at Evans Ideas All. Elliot Sheldon, Director of Facilities. Uh, got a couple weeks on Rob, but you know, <laughs> I'm excited to be here and look forward to the school year starting. Michael? Oh, I didn't realize I was speaking, but uh, <laughs> I'm a communication specialist, uh, starting my second full year this year. Um, uh, I think most of you have seen me in some, uh, some form or another, uh, and I look forward to capturing some more great moments uh, in the district this year. And uh, Joe? I'm supposed to be behind the camera. So, no, but I'm, I'm Joe. I run the TV studio, and um, uh, it's my first year uh, full time in the district. I was here part time last year. Um, so, I'm at all the board meetings, all the events, uh, filming, and um, we have a lot of new exciting segment pieces uh, and whatnot that people will be seeing throughout the year through all five schools. Uh, really happy to be here, and I'm also an alumni. I graduated in 2012, and it's an incredible district, and it's wonderful to see how strong it is continuing to be. So, thank you. Okay, thank you, Joe. I think we got everyone. I didn't miss anyone, did I? Good. Um, so, Dr. Chester, you are coordinating the elementary piece? Yes. Yes. Uh, we are going to have three groups of board members starting uh, about five minutes rotating. I'll play the role of timekeeper and say, okay, you had enough fun there. It's time to move to your next location. Uh, where are you setting up your location for your elementary team? Since there's so many of us, does this make sense or would you like to move somewhere else, ladies? I all right, we're, we're good all right. together here. All right, the board members then want to take chairs and feel comfortable talking with sure. the elementary team there. Sure. Um, right, so uh, yeah. well, once yes. we ring the bell, which I don't have, but I'll go bomb. Uh, right <laughs> uh, you'll have uh, sure. Matt and Halley and Lori Giacobbe coming to you. Awesome. Um, and then our middle group, middle level, uh, grade six to eight. You're going to be at that end of the table, guys. So yeah. we will be sharing with you uh, our group two, Chrissy Vegan and Sean Fountain. That will be in group two. And they will start with you in a few minutes. And then the high school, uh, Joe, they'll be there with you. And uh, Joe, where do you want to be? We'll go on these tables over here. Yeah. All right, so if you go over there, and then uh, I have three board members who will be joining you. Uh, for the first round, Jackie, Chrissy, and uh, Rob. Okay. Are there any questions as to what we're going to do for the next half hour? All right, so uh, let's get with it. And uh, we're starting round one. And our presenters will give you some cheat sheets and give you a chance to ask questions. And there'll be time for more time at the end. Let's go for it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. The second one we're doing, the second one we're doing, we're actually going to take a look. That's great to hear.
all of our administrators. I had the opportunity to get to our board members to meet each of the sessions. Uh, you should be very proud of yourself, well prepared, well versed, and you've covered all the topics, but I'll let some of the board members react as well. But from the elementary to the middle to the high school, uh, really a super job, and I thank you for speaking to you. Madam Vice President, do you want to comment on your experience? Um, I thought it was great. Speak to the mic. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you. Yes, just to reiterate what Dr. Bernie said, thank you so much. I thought um, all three groups were wonderful. It's great to hear all the things that are going on. Um, great to collaborate. Just really nice to vibes. So thank you very much. You have to have something funny. Go ahead. Oh, good. I just, just everything that I heard today and where, I mean, we're, I mean, it's just, it's really mind blowing and I would love to have my children start again <laughs> within the East Chester School District. I really would because just the, the changes that are being made within ELA, math, high school guidance, counseling across the whole district. Um, it really is a breath of fresh, fresh air. And I just want to say thank you for being open to ideas and to doing the research and to exploring all of these various programs that are out there. I really, really wish my kids would start again. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. That, that's true. I'll just say that it's so true because as I'm listening to things, I'm thinking like, oh wow, I wish my kids had Spanish in kindergarten yeah. or first grade. Oh wow, I wish my sixth graders have that study skills class. Yeah. So it is really so great to hear all of these changes in the program. It really is. Mm -hmm. The ones who have kids coming in. Yeah, you guys are yeah. 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 All right, thank you uh, for your comments. Did you want to say anything? Any of the board members? No, just thank you for taking the time to talk. Yeah. Just thank you to everyone for taking the time to explain all these great programs that you're in. Yeah, no, the passion and everything, the time and effort you put in really shows, so we really do appreciate it. Okay, thank you. Sure. Do you want to say a few words <laughs> <laughs> your experience? Yes, I, I, again, I would say thank you guys so much for your time this afternoon. I mean, I learned a lot. You know, I would say to everyone now together, and I think I said this individually in the groups, but we have to communicate things to parents, kids, to the community three different ways at least five times. So I would say to all of you, the more we can simplify things, the more that we can communicate them, because what's happening is really great stuff. And I think, you know, Mr. DeMeo said this, all this stuff on paper is awesome. It's putting it in action, and people understanding that out in the community. So the more that you all, as a team, can communicate to everyone and continue to do that, I think that would be great. But thank you all so much for today. So, we wanted to leave a little bit of time for questions. Did any of the board members have questions of any of the presentations? Uh, for example, we brought up at uh, our high school presentation, what happened to driver's ed? Ursula has a really great program, and um, you, know, you can find out that company is part of a company, a larger company, or maybe they're willing to expand to us as well, but they, you know, my son took the course. I mean, at the time, they didn't do any car instruction because it was COVID. Um, so, but I think they've since now reincorporated, but he certainly came out with paperwork needed for the insurance and for um, the DMV, so. So I'll get the ball rolling on that uh, with an email to Dr. Capuano and the high school administration and see if we can get that uh, moving again. Right. Great, yeah. yeah. We yeah. do hear a lot oh. of parents asking for drivers. Yes. I used to coordinate that when I was at the high school, okay. and we worked with a woman, Jennifer Ray, and she was working for PASS, the company we used to use for the driver's education component. The pandemic really did not, you know, it took them under, basically, but the person I worked with, she has since transitioned to another company. I can check in with her to see if she's still working with that company, but she's familiar with our district. That's so, I'll share about that. That's great. Sure. That's yeah. right. You were the coordinator. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Did you our kids, do actually. that as an yeah. assistant yeah. principal? Yeah. I did. Okay. That's helpful information. Um, 
Any questions of board members of any of the programs? I asked a lot during my one-on-one -on -one session, so I appreciate you guys humoring me and answering your questions. That was great. Yeah, I want to raise one issue while uh, we're all here together. Uh, it has to do with literacy K-5. Um, I know you heard about the reading and writing workshop that we're introducing for the first time. Um, the name Columbia University is affiliated with that. And I don't want people to draw the wrong conclusions. Columbia has come under some criticism for not initially being on board with the science of reading and phonetics and uh, phonics. Uh, they've done their public mea culpas on that and it should not contaminate any thinking about reading and writing, that that is a solid program that can easily be integrated into the science of reading, phonetic awareness, phonics, and all of those elements that we have. I don't know if any of the elementary people want to add to that, but we are engaging with Columbia University. Some parents may say, oh, Horace, okay. How could you even consider that? Lucy Hawkins is disgrace. Well, she did have penance. She's forgiven. Uh, she's now on board with the phonics thing, but it should not in any way uh, tend to hurt the reading and writing. Uh, I wanted the board to hear that. Mm -hmm. Susan, I don't know if you want to add to that. Yeah, yeah, you know, something that I mentioned to all three groups is that idea that while Phonics is extremely important, and we've invested in foundations K to three, and we've also invested in Hegarty for phonemic awareness. That is only one part of the full picture of the science of reading, and the materials that we are investing in from Teachers College include, you know, libraries with thousands of titles in them for students to actually practice all of their reading skills, and it includes. Read alouds, which help children to you know learn um, background knowledge and new vocabulary. So there is more to it. If we were only investing in those materials without phonics and phonemic awareness, then we wouldn't be doing right by our students. But the idea was to find the best materials for each of the different um, goals that we have to accomplish in this. Any other comments from anyone? One of the comments I heard, and I'll share it publicly, uh, boy, we're really excited that you brought Kevin Guadotti initially, and now, where is he, Rob Jacoby. Um, it's been a breath of air for college career counseling. I think Joe, you, uh, and Joe made that point, and um, that's very important that uh, that digital outreach is going to help our guidance department enormously, and we didn't have the benefit of that uh, some years ago. So now we do have that benefit with our uh, directors of technology, and that's an important component of outreach. Also, uh, Joe Blue, uh, we want you into the classrooms with some of our innovative programs. We think it's a great way to let the community know what um, what does Ed Jennings look like? Uh, that waiting field. Amazing. I think you're going to hear from the middle school principal. Uh, oh, what does skills program grade six look like? And by the way, what does global language uh, for our sixth graders being exposed look like? So I think there are a lot of opportunities we have to go video and you have something you do inside the classroom, right, Jeff? Yep, that's our new segment here. Um, for those of you who don't know, uh, it's a segment that is literally what its title is. It features what is going on inside of the classroom, um, and it's a great way uh, to build transparency with what is being taught within the district, um, especially for people who haven't been in school for a while, to see what is going on inside the classroom, what is being taught, and how it's being taught. Uh, we've had two episodes so far at the end of last year. Uh, we featured many uh, in one of them for Reveal Math. <laughs> and, um, and yeah, it's just a really, really great segment piece. Um, so far, everyone from participating with it to viewing it has had rave reviews about it. So uh, we're going to blow the lid off of that. 
uh, this year in the technology department. So anyone who is interested, faculty, um, email Rob, email myself um, <laughs> in the same email so we could get yeah. the same message. Um, but what Dr. Valenti was saying, we're very excited to you know, continue to showcase uh, all the excellence that's within an issue. And hopefully classes. archive those at the curriculum website so any new parents or current parents can access them. We are, yeah. yeah. Michael and I are building out, and Rob, we're building out the website so it'll be easily uh, accessible for everyone in the community. And right now on our YouTube page, we have a playlist mm -hmm. with all the episodes. All right, I do know our next guest speaker should be arriving shortly. She's got two and a half minutes. Um, uh, I did want to explain that the chair, you can laugh, that was good. <laughs> just being snarky. <laughs> The CARE Coalition is a town-based group, and uh, they're here to talk to us about partnering with them on speakers in general, uh, student emotional growth, mental health, etc. Chrissy, you have something to say about that. You want to introduce that to uh, our administrators? Oh, sure. Sure. <laughs> um, I had the pleasure of attending their town coalition um, and they had a variety of speakers who were fantastic. So I reached out to them and asked if they would partner with us and they should say, said yes. So um, they're going to tell us tonight about what they could offer, what kind of speakers they could have come speak to our students, speak to parents and staff. So um, we're excited to be uh, Great. So, uh, our guests have just arrived. Please. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, yes. Yeah, <laughs> oh, so excuse me. Oh, I was briefly board president, so here we are. <laughs>
where we encourage individuals to take a picture wearing a green bracelet in their everyday lives and pass it on to someone who they feel could benefit from viewing the resources listed on the website. To our surprise, we've received hundreds of photo submissions and from individuals wearing bracelets in places like Israel, Africa, Jamaica, all over the world. So in 2018, the Care Coalition, since, I'm sorry, since 2018, the Care Coalition has become so much more than a website and bracelet. We've run many projects and sponsored many events, and uh, Chris and Kim will touch on just a few of those shortly. And finally, in 2022, the Care Coalition officially became a nonprofit in the state of New York. Uh, we've also elected six amazing board members, including lawyers, teachers, philanthropists, and local school and community officials to help the Care Coalition navigate what's next to come. Hey guys, my name is Chris. Um, I joined the Care Coalition back in March of 2020. As you remember, that was during the height of COVID, and I, like most of you all, are looking for something to, something positive to invest our time and energy into. Kim introduced me to the rest of the uh, members of the group via Zoom, and the rest was history. The first initiative that Kim and I undertook was the Together We Can movement. This was a movement meant to bring a sense of community and togetherness back to our world around us. We reached out to our network that consisted of family, friends, um, local business owners, and community leaders to send well wishes and blessings to our frontline workers to let them know that they were not in this fight alone. Um, after editing and putting together the video, we posted it to our Instagram page with the hashtag TogetherWeCan. And in under 24 hours, we received over 12,000 views and hundreds of likes. This really just kind of showed the outreach that we were able to have outside of just our local community. Um, these are some of the pictures that we had. One of our other, one of our other more impactful events is the candlelight vigil. Um, this is something that we do annually, and it is to honor and remember those that we have lost due to the mental health crisis. This past May, we held our sixth vigil, where we had a plethora of speakers come and share their personal testimonies. Um, this is a short recap video edited and filmed by the Chester student, Nanado Kuboi. So many familiar faces and so many new faces as well. Thank you all for coming out tonight. We appreciate your love and support. Coalition and we're excited for next year. So these stories of hope and strength 
um, had su have such an influence on our growing audience that we had to actually move to a larger venue this year, which was in front of Town Hall, um, and we only anticipate it getting bigger from here. Built to build off of the speakers from the vigil, Kim and I then launched the Person of the Month initiative, which she will touch on now. Hi everyone, um, my name is Kimberly Colasino and I've been a member of the Fair Coalition since 2018. Funny story about how I got involved, I actually got involved right after the first ever candlelight vigil, the first annual. Um, I was just so inspired and moved by the work of the Fair Coalition and the speakers that they had that year that right after the vigil I hung around and we get to talk to some of the members of the coalition to see how I could get involved. And Again, six years later, and here I am. We've only grown, and it's only progressed, so it's been an awesome ride. Um, basically, after the success of our candlelight vigil, we wanted to keep the momentum going around having these speakers come and share their story and get that message of hope and recovery out there. We wanted to figure out a way to do it in a wider spread. The vigil's been great. We have a ton of people that come to attend. However, we wanted to, as Chris mentioned, start affecting people and touching people in other communities as well, and people that might not be able to be there in person. So that's really what helped us launch our Person of the Month initiative. Um, person of the Month was an initiative that Chris and I launched um, back a few years ago where we picked a person each month to sit down and have an interview with. So the people that we would pick to speak with were people that have gone through some sort of trial and tribulation and came out on the other side. Um, basically what we would do is they would tell us a little bit about themselves, uh, what they've been through and where they are now, again, in order to spread that message of hope and recovery. We, what we would do with those interviews is we would record them, we would put them on our social media platforms, and similar to Together We Can, they just blew up. Um, we had so many people reaching out to us from the community and others just thanking us for shedding light on um, this mental health crisis and you know trying and get rid of the stigma around mental health. Um, due to the Person of the Month initiative, we were actually approached by a magazine as well. Um, View Magazine reached out to us and asked us to be a feature in the magazine. Um, and again, it just continued with the growth of this initiative and um, it's been great. So basically, after six years of vigils, um, the Person of the Month initiative, where we've had a month's worth of speakers come and share their stories, um, the subject matters have varied in terms of topics that we've covered. Some of the topics, not limited to what's on this slide, but some of the topics that we have had speakers for include OCD, drug addiction, alcohol abuse, we've had people with physical disabilities, sexual abuse, any stages of grief that people have gone through, eating disorders, anxiety, major depressive disorder, PTSD, um, down to toxic workplaces and work environments, suicide ideation, self-harm, trauma, but again, the list goes on and on. Um, and one of the most re rewarding aspects of the work that we've done in these initiatives with having speakers is actually building relationships with the speakers that we have worked with. That's been the most incredible part of it because we um, have built connections through our network with these speakers and it's incredible to see how far that they've come. And that goes for the next presenter here today, Jim Carlin. Um, Jim Carlin actually started out as a person of the month. I believe he was our first or second ever person of the month. After that, he became our keynote speaker for the next vigil that we had. And now he is a board member of the Care Coalition recently appointed. So I'm going to pass it on to him to share a little bit about his story, his experience with the Care Coalition, and then finally what the Care Coalition's solution is. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. Um, I have some prepared remarks because I want to try to be as respectful of your time as possible. I know you've had a long day. Uh, so, Good evening. First of all, I'd like to thank uh, the members of the board for the opportunity to participate this evening. And thank you also for your service on this board. Having served on several boards and commissions myself, I, I understand the time commitment and the difficulty in balancing your professional and your personal lives and what you have to do for this board. So thank you very much. I thought it'd be helpful to talk a little bit about my background and to give you my perspective on the CARE Coalition 
not just as a member of its board of directors or as a regular speaker at some of our various events, but also as a former patient of two very well-known psychiatric hospitals. In 2017, I was a high-functioning attorney with a burgeoning practice and a partner at the largest law firm in our sister state of Connecticut. I was also a lawyer and an officer in the largest and oldest law firm in the United States, the Judge Advocate General's Corps of the United States Army. I was married with two beautiful boys. Fast forward to 2018, I was diagnosed with major depressive disorder and was hospitalized. A few months later, my wife filed for divorce. I left my position at my firm and I was honorably discharged from the Army. Now when something like this happens to you, there are generally two paths that you can take. You can recover and put those experiences on a shelf and pretend like they never happened. Or you can recognize the value in the story and share it with others. And that's what I've chosen to do. I founded the Wellness Committee of the Fairfield County Bar Association based in Stanford, Connecticut for which I have conducted and moderated multiple presentations on a variety of wellness-related topics. I've also been a guest speaker to law firms and corporations who have invited me to tell my story and to engage with their leadership as we explore ways to end the stigma of mental illness in the workplace. And with that background and experience, I was connected to Kim by a mutual friend who suggested that I speak to her about the Care Coalition and the important work he was doing to raise awareness. I had written a book about my psychiatric hospitalization, and Kim and Chris interviewed me as one of the featured persons of the month. I remember being impressed by the volunteers, as well as by the other featured speakers. When Kim asked if I would agree to be the keynote at our annual candlelight vigil, I enthusiastically said yes, and when she asked me to become a member of the board, I also enthusiastically said yes. As Kim mentioned, over the last couple of years, the Care Coalition has worked hard to formalize its structure, in addition to continuing its programming and its outreach. These efforts culminated in the Coalition recently obtaining 501c3 status, and shortly thereafter a board of directors was created, and we continue to work towards finalizing our structure and organization. In the wake of that accomplishment and those efforts, it was incumbent upon the board to agree on what direction the coalition would take while still preserving our core identity as a community-based organization dedicated to mental health advocacy and outreach. It didn't take long for the board to determine that the most logical choice was to look at our own local community for opportunities. And in our judgment, there was no better partner than the school system here in East Chester. <coughs> The board discussed three potential initiatives that we thought would be accretive to the school's efforts and concerns for the emotional and physical well-being of its students. The first is the speaker's initiative. As you've already heard, we've been very fortunate over the years to work with a variety of speakers who have spoken on a multitude of relevant and timely wellness topics. You've perhaps gotten a glimpse of this by seeing clips from the candlelight vigil or attending the vigil yourselves. We believe that we can bring speakers to events where they can lead a discussion in a longer format organized around selected topics during the course of the school year. Some of these topics might be appropriate for the school day. For example, the other night the board was discussing the topic of social media addiction and its implications. Other topics such as substance abuse addiction and recovery may be more appropriate for an evening presentation. We think this provides an immediate opportunity to both educate and inspire, and we think we, we can make this happen reasonably quickly, even with only a few days remaining before the start of the school year. The second initiative is creating networks of care. We think there's an opportunity to leverage our connections to professionals within the mental health and wellness field and create a referral network for students. Now, none of us on the staff or the board where our various volunteers, for the most part, are clinicians or therapists, and neither are most of the proposed speakers, nor would any of us ever seek to play that role. 
However, given our collective backgrounds, experiences, and connections, we think there's a real ability to fulfill our core mission statement, which is to connect those who need with those who care. And in coordination with the school, create a referral network to help students find the resources and the support that they need. Additionally, there's a second dimension to this initiative, which may be most appropriately reserved for older students, and that is to help create a culture of peer counseling and support by and among the student population. Now, this can be done in an organized way or perhaps one-on-one. -on -one. There are also educational programs such as mental health first aid for teens, which can be taught directly to the students. The possibilities are endless, and of course, we welcome your input and your suggestions. And the last initiative we discussed was simply growing the coalition. If you come to the candlelight vigil, and we hope that you will all attend, you'll notice that the CARE Coalition clearly draws on a broad section of our community. That said, the driving force in recent years have been bright, motivated, and caring young people. Now, some of us older folks may sit on the board, but the truth is that young men and women have helped organize our events, and they've really been the fuel in this engine. And so it makes perfect sense to open up our platform to the students and invite them to be content creators on our various media platforms. Of course, this would need to be done in a responsible way so that the students are protected and safe. The point is that we all know social media can be used in negative and hurtful ways. This, we think, is an opportunity to use it in positive and constructive ways. I'd like to just leave you with one final thought, if I could. A few weeks ago, my family suffered a significant loss. We lost my brother to cancer. As we eulogized him, the question that was asked was, why does something like that happen? And the only answer that we could give as a family was that so a greater good could come of it. Our coalition was born out of grief and pain. Its work more than anything else is to bring hope to those in despair and to encourage others to be a light in someone else's darkness. Because love never gives up. On behalf of the other members of the Board of Directors, our dedicated staff, our volunteers, I want to thank you very much for the opportunity to speak here this evening. We are very excited with the prospect of working with you. These kids are our future. We owe it to them to provide the best information available to enable them to lead happy, healthy, and productive lives for the greater good of all. Thank you very much.
Um, I think that now in 2023, there's a lot of other speakers that you saw and um, that were at the candlelight vigil who would be wonderful. And um, also, like Jim said, some of them at night, some of them during the day, which we would love to be able to partner with all of you on. Dr. Valenti sent us a grant information at the meeting with Westchester County about tobacco use, a grant that we could partner, the school would have, we would partner with the school on it. We have a meeting on Monday about that. So there's many different opportunities and we would love to be a part of that and hope moving forward. Um, like Jim said and everyone else said, we know school starts in one, two weeks from now and um, we think we could even get something together at the end of September and the uh, calendar moving forward. So we really appreciate your time. If you have any questions, please feel free. And if not, we love to hear from you and um, can't wait to work with you all. <laughs> so thank you very much. I'll just jump in and say that um, Sally and I have been meeting and talking, and I thought it was very interesting that the board used to have the Health and Wellness Committee, and then after Sally left, I don't know. No, no, it was it. prior. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we as a board would like to bring that back and have a Health and Wellness Committee again, and Sally and I talked about having um, monthly themes, and like one month the theme could be social media use, another month it could be drug use, and then we could talk about having speakers come in and either speak to the kids during the day or have an event at night that could include parents. Um, but we are open to suggestions about what kind of monthly themes you would maybe like to see that would benefit you think, the students in your school. So um, we just want to open up that conversation and say what kind of monthly themes. Even, I mean, students, yes priority number one, but right. I think also as a community, just even, I mean, teacher wellness, yes. right? right. I, you know, just, and, and yes. you know, even parent wellness. I don't know, but I think it could be a combination of various types of topics or speakers, or, you know, specific. Yeah. Right. I mean, I think in the spirit of like, <coughs> yep. Right, I mean, wellness for the entire yeah. community, right. definitely all the groups that make up our educational community. I think it's a wonderful, yeah idea to start with the wellness committee. Uh, I know it's a form of principal. My question is, I'm a high school principal. Do you have speakers that speak just to a high school population? Yeah, so, uh, with all individuals and the people of the month that we've had, our network has grown tremendously. And it doesn't stop there because they're very passionate about helping us connect with even more individuals. So. so I'm Waverly principal. I have kindergarten and first grade. Are there speakers that you would be able to bring in at that level to support students? I think we'd have to find the topic that's appropriate. I don't really know that you know tobacco use would <coughs> to be addressed, and we would hope not in Waverly, but something like you know computer use yeah. or social media, um, social media yeah. or. Right. Right. Being able to say when you wanted to do something or not go with someone, a cer you know, on how to handle situation. We were talking about like something in Valentine's Day about healthy relationships. May that be with your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister. That would be something for the elementary school, whereas the high school it would maybe be with your boyfriend or your girlfriend. You're in eighth grade. You've never had a boyfriend, girlfriend. You don't know how to handle your situation. You want to stay out to nine o'clock. You don't know how to approach your mom about that. Your dad, your aunt, your grandma. So I think like something like that. February, we're thinking healthy relationships, and obviously, as each grade and each age, we're thinking of a different way to approach that. And some some of the topics are sort of cross generational. So mm -hmm. just taking the dovetailing on relationships, um, healthy relationship with yourself. You know, how do you talk to yourself? How do you have positive conversations? With Self. I mean, that's something that I think kids at every stage of development, um, you know, can, can benefit from. And we also felt like with Shane um, and being uh, the strength and conditioning coach, mm -hmm. like, I feel that that also helps with um, lifelong healthy exercise. Like, I feel like that's something that I, I never really was taught, you know, in the 90s when you're going to his ed class. But now there's strength and conditioning and you have the option to walk around the track. Like, I know when I'm having a 
bad day, going on a walk will help me. I don't know if people understand that as much. Maybe just teaching healthy relationships mm -hmm. with yourself mm -hmm. instead of turning to other things would be helpful. And even younger kids maybe taking a time out. You know, we have mm -hmm. people who have the mental health first aid. We know people who have the certification and could come and speak about it. So I, I think as we, and this is a great partnership, uh, hear me. The board has five strategic priorities, as you all know. Priority number five, which is new, is partnerships with both the town, uh, VOCES, and other groups uh, dedicated to student mental health and well-being. So, Sally, you're the point person for the town. Okay. And uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll be that until I appoint someone. Okay. Uh, but I think it's important that if a principal wants a speaker, or if you think you have a few speakers that you may want to recommend, uh, we're ready to start rolling in okay. September. We do have an assembly policy, and the board has passed that policy uh, requesting minimally four assemblies per year, and principals must be developing those and get them to me uh, by September. So I'm sure there might be an interest on the part of principals to know what you're offering and do you have speakers along certain lines. Okay, so we'll get that yep. information, and I'm sure all the principals in here would be happy to hear, communicate with me, not about a permit for a gym or a field. It'll be so much nicer, so that'll be a great communication that we will. Field auditorium. Well, the, uh, yeah, the video auditorium, this will be wonderful. I'll have to ask who to send it to, so it'll be great. So um, I think everyone here probably has my email address. <laughs> Got oh, we, we can get that out. Oh, Do we have a list of speakers? And um, yes. Yeah. And you you can that. send that to us, yeah. and I'll get it out to our yeah. um, yep. administrative have, team. I'll make sure that this PowerPoint deck is sent out as well, because this also has the current college. That'd be great. Yeah. 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 Y
then the board is going to go to the executive session. Again, I just want to thank you all so much for your time today. I'm looking forward to a very successful start to this <coughs>